hi so today's topic for editorial discussion is uh, who is accountable so this came in the indian express it was not from the hindu it is from the indian express and it relates to the manipur incident so yes what this article deals with it, it it talks about the political side of manipur and let us not get into the political side we'll just keep it as a political as possible <coughs> so yes so manipur conflict and recent times you know that there has been some issues some kind of violence in manipur and this was taken to another level in the past two or three days when the social media media was flooded with uh, uh, pictures and uh, videos of women being harassed and molested and all these things happened right two particular women they were paraded uh, naked by i may by by some meet up my mighty people and all and all these things were happening and there was this public furor and uh, yes the conscience of the society was affected and all these things were happening and social media was flooded with a lot of write ups and all about regarding the manipur issue and everything so we'll just keep why this manipur issue has become a such a big conflict what is the reason behind it and what are the other components other components with respect to upsc that we can handle and how to uh, handle this situation so yes manipur we all know the northeast india itself it is a melting point and uh, there are a lot of communities there are a lot of communities in the northeast india and manipur in particular has around 39 ethnic communities and most of these ethnic communities have been victim of weaponization of these ethnic identities by <coughs> for the vested interest of a powerful few yes these uh, ethnic uh, identities have been weaponized for the betterment or for the interest of some of the people for the for the vested interest of some powerful people so the all these things have happened so what is the reason for this particular conflict so why did this manipur issue get uh, such a big issue Uh, become a such a big issue and even the european parliament has passed some resolutions and all with respect to the manipur issue so what is this so yes this all started around uh, uh, 10 15 years back when the maitis yes maitis have been asking for st status uh, even earlier itself but this issue between this maiti and kuki it started around like 10 to 15 years back when the maitis they started they vigorously started Uh, asking or uh, uh, requesting for the scheduled tribe status they are non tribal people they are they are not considered as tribes in india but they have been asking for scheduled tribes people and this has been opposed by various other people by by, by various other ethnic communities like the nagas and especially the kukis that is the conflict between these two and yes this may be the catalyst that started this violence it, it, this is the catalyst that started this violence but there are other issues at play there are other issues at play that have also uh, contributed to this recent increase in violence and that has to be factored in when talking about the manipur violence so first we'll see how st status will be given or what is the procedure to get st status so yes the first it starts with the state or ut the state or the union territory it has to decide whether it can give uh, st status for that particular community or not be it any particular community or any state that particular state if tamil nadu means tamil nadu has to decide manipur means manipur has to decide yes uh, the state has to decide and then it will go to the ministry of tribal affairs it will go to the ministry of tribal affairs and from there after analysis and after <coughs> after scrutiny it will go to the office of register general of india office of register general of india and if that office accepts it, accepts if the register general accepts the proposal he will then pass the order to national commission on scheduled tribes you'll pass your order to the national commission on scheduled tribes and after concurrence of the ncst it will go to the cabinet for amendment it will go to the cabinet for amendment of the constitutional scheduled tribes order so this is the procedure that is followed for uh, getting the scheduled tribe status first the state has to decide then we'll go to the mota then it will pass to the office of registrar general of india then to the national commission of on uh, schedule tribes and then it will go to the cabinet for amendment of this particular constitutional schedule tribes order of 1950 so this is the procedure 
So this particular catalyst event. So what is this catalyst event? So yes, we saw that around 15 to 20 years, this Manipur uh, people, Maiti people in particular have been asking for the ST status. And recently in May, just before May, what happened was there was this uh, Manipur High Court order that directed, that directed the state government to consider giving ST status to Maitis. So High Court has given an order to consider the, to consider providing ST status to Maitis. So, in uh, as opposed to this, as opposed to this, there is the student union, student union, all tribal student union of, all tribal student union of Manipur. They conducted solidarity marches. Solidarity marches is just like parade. They, they conducted parade. These parades were almost peaceful, almost peaceful. Just in one single area, in one single area, this parade, this parade and other such parades, they met with a, a violent clash with the Meiti people. That that parade mob, it attacked a group of Meiti community people, and this is what acted as the catalyst for the recent conflict. Yes, <coughs> so this was the conflict. This was the issue also. Uh, why Meitis? So why this issue between Meitis and Kuki has occurred? So yes. And uh, why is Maiti asking for this status? Why is Maiti asking for this status is that Manipur became part of India only in 1949. Manipur became a part of India only in 1949. And before that, before that, uh, they had this ST status. And after they became part of the uh, Indian Union, they are uh, not given this ST status. So what they are claiming is this, even before I became a part of India, I was recognized as a scheduled tribe, so please do recognize me as a scheduled tribe now also. So that is one thing they are asking for. The other thing is protection of the culture. So scheduled tribe, given an ST um, status, that particular tribe or that particular community has various avenues or various other schemes and mechanisms to protect their own culture. Yes, in general also, there are fundamental rights also to protect the culture. But when it comes to scheduled tribes, they have some additional input. They have some additional uh, monetary developments and monetary incentives and all. Monetary schemes, grants and all to develop their culture. So yes, that is also why Mighty is asking for ST status. Another thing is that land land has become a very big issue when it comes to the meiti kuki conflict so yes in manipur meitis are majority around 53 percentage of uh, inhabitants of manipur are from the meiti community yes uh, now talking about the geography of manipur and is divided into two parts that is the imphal valley and the hills that surround so there is this imphal valley and a lot of hills has been surrounding this uh, imphal valley and these meiti people they are at the center of this valley. They live only in this center of this Imphal Valley. So that is one issue. So 53%, 53% of uh, Maitis are living only in 10% of the Manipur. 10% of Manipur. 10% is what Imphal Valley uh, is made up of. And uh, that is where the Maitis are living. And one big catch here is that non-tribals cannot buy uh, lands in hilly areas. In Manipur, non-tribals cannot buy land in hilly area. So that is one issue there. But uh, tribals can buy even in the Imphal Valley also. So what these mighty people are saying is that you are not allowing us to buy lands outside the Imphal Valley. But uh, no, tribals, they can buy in the Imphal Valley. So we are getting squeezed by we are getting squeezed by the other tribal people and we do not have any other resources or we do not have the permission to buy lands in the hilly regions so this is what they said and this is also a major reason why they are asking for the scheduled tribe status mates so now cookies so what are these cookies doing so what are these cookies asking why do they oppose this matey uh, matey's demand for st status so yes Maiti is dominate. The first point that they place is that Maiti is dominate. We have seen that in numerical uh, numbers, 53 percentage of Manipur is made up of Maiti people. So naturally they are dominant in their own spheres. And the other thing is, there are 60 seats in Manipur. MLA seats, there are 60 seats in the Legislative Assembly and 40 seats are captured by Maiti people. And if given the status of scheduled tribe, there will be additional reservations for them. In the legislative assembly, there will be reservations. So, uh, Maiti people will, will get more into the legislation and more into the public uh, arena and all. And all these things will happen. So, that is why Kuki and uh, in, part in particular and other tribes such as the Nagas 
have been complaining or have raised concern against providing uh, ST status to the Maitis. So that is one thing. And the next is the lack of opportunities. Lack of opportunities, yes, that is what we discussed now, right? If Maitis, they are already the dominant, they are already majority. But even if they are given, if they are given this ST status, they will continue to dominate. They will continue to assert this uh, public arena or public sphere, and there will be. Uh, not a lot of opportunities for the other tribes there are we, we saw that there are around 39 tribes 39 communities right but if yes if might is alone dominate the scene the other 38 will will scatter will scatter they will not have uh, adequate opportunities at all so yes that is another big issue and they also cite yes why did uh, um, Maiti ask for st status to protect their culture what cookies say or what other experts say is that those who oppose sts uh, st status for Maitis. What they say is that culture is already protected. We all know that this that Maiti is part of the official language, uh, official language under uh, Schedule 8, right? So yes, what they cite is that uh, their culture is already protected in various forms, and one such form is that of their language being protected under the eighth schedule and given the status of a official language in India. So yes, this is how the uh, cookies oppose the claims of. This is how the cookies oppose the claims of. Maitis uh, for uh, Maitis demand for the ST status. Yes. Now, what are the other factors? We know this major factor is that Maitis asking for uh, ST status and the cookies opposing it. Maitis and cookies opposing it. And yes. Now, what are the other factors at play? What are the other factors that play that added fuel to this fire? That added fuel to this fire. Yes. Eviction of cookies. Eviction of cookies. And in recent times, in the past year or so, what has happened is that. Uh, there were a lot of uh, illegal poppy, illegal poppy cultivation in Manipur, illegal poppy cultivation which, uh, which is used to make other, uh, other types of drugs also. In fact, opium is also is taken from poppy, right? So, and all these things were happening. A lot of illegal poppy cultivation was uh, going around in Manipur and what the government did was it tried to, it tried to uh, reduce the menace of uh, drugs, reduce the menace of drugs and pass this uh, operation. You know, like to crack down on uh, such uh, illegal cultivators. So, so what these cultivators did is that they used the hills. All their cultivation, all their plantations were on the hills because hills provide a natural vantage point. We can see who is coming and all. Yes, one point is there and hills are wide. Hills are very huge and hills provide for the best hiding spots in Manipur. And they use hills. And what, what happened was uh, in a bit to reduce uh, all these narco narcotic drugs and all, what the government was, it evicted a lot of cookies. We all saw that uh, Maitis are in the center and cookies and other tribes are in the hills. So what happened was eviction of cookies from the hills happened. Eviction of cookies from the hills happened. But yes, eviction will lead to a lot of resentment among, the, among, among a particular community. And the thing is, they were also not rehabilitated. They were not given other avenues of livelihood. They were not, other, uh, they were not given other... Uh, places of shelter and all now all these things happen so that is what eviction of cookies from the hilly areas also added fuel to the fire and crack down on illegal immigrants so yes myanmar the next door uh, neighbor for us the next door neighbor to us myanmar right what happened in myanmar is that the tatmadaw that is the military it took over the it took over the democratically ele democratically elected government and there were a lot of refugees a lot of illegal migrants coming from uh, myanmar into manipur into Manipur and most of these people were from this community called as the Chin community. Most of these people were from this community called as the Chin community. And Chin and Kuki, they have had historical ties. In fact, Kuki considers these Chin people as their own, as their own. So let us uh, keep it apart, let us keep it aside, we will come to that later. The thing is, crack down on illegal immigrants. So people from Myanmar, mostly the Chin people, they come, they came to India, especially Manipur. And the government, what they did was, they rounded up all these illegal migrants for deportation back to Myanmar. Now, who who came here? The Chin community. So this Kuki people, the Kuki community felt that the government is attacking. The government is attacking their own kins, their own brotherhoods, their own brethren. It is what the Kuki felt. So, they, they in fact, they feel as a one big community called the Chin Kuki community. So, they feel they are attacking themselves. The Kukis feel that the Kukis, not the Chins, but the Kukis are in attack or under attack. So, this also 
uh, fuel the resentment of the cookies against the Maitis. So these are the other factors. So now yes, we all saw this violence being taking place. A lot of houses were burnt and uh, a lot of uh, violence was resorted to and all these things happened. So what did the government do? The government initially, it, 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 it started with all these short term uh, explanations and all, and all these short term uh, mechanisms were used. That is the armed forces was imply, uh, like uh, deployed there. The army came. Uh, a lot of paramilitary forces such as the um, Assam Rifles, they were deployed, paramilitary forces. And yes, uh, the IAF, the Indian Air Force was also pressed into action to control the issue. All these things were happened and uh, the government also resorted to this Armed Forces Special Powers Act and curfews. Curfews that people should not come out and all these curfews were announced. Armed Forces Special Powers Act was uh, uh, like it was implemented, it was... Uh, administered in the disturbed area and all these things happen and uh, it also resorted to internet shutdown and uh, internet shutdown and use of section 144 so internet shutdowns we all know yes there are a lot of human rights violences when it comes to uh, internet shutdowns and armed forces special powers act but yes extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures right i'm not just justifying their actions but yes uh, in order to bring down the violence this has to happen all these things were uh, followed and the home minister level talks also as a cut between the group heads and all these things were happened. So these are the government actions that has been taken so far, so far. Now what is the way forward, how this how this issue can be handled? So yes, while talking about this Manipur issue, the, the uh, social media is flooded with write-ups. We already saw that, right? The flood, flooded with write-ups and uh, self-imposed experts trying to solve this Manipur issue. So yes, I'm not trying to be an expert here. The thing is, this has uh, already been accepted by a lot of political uh, experts and a lot of political experts have suggested such measures. So that is what I am telling you people here. The way forward, the first thing is, yes, short term. In the short term, AFSPA and curfews are very much needed in order to bring down the violence and uh, uh, restore peace and public order there. So that is one indeliable uh, thing or indispensable thing that has to be followed. AFSPA and curfews can be used in the short term and I am talking about short term but such knee jerk responses can lead to further resentment that is that that is why we are using it in the short term just to reduce the violence and bring peace and public order back to the uh, back to Manipur. So now on a medium to long term what is the policy what can be done is that all these communities right these Meiti let it be the Meiti or the Naga or Kukis all the government in itself they must uh, stand down from their own belligerent and uh, rigid posts they must not oppose everything they must uh, they must take a much nuanced stance they must uh, not stand steadfast I will be like hey, this only they should not be like that they must come in for a come forward for a compromise compromise between the communities is the uh, is the better solution is the best solution that one can achieve in when conflicts arise between two communities. No amount of AFSPA or no amount of curfews will stop the resentment unless and until a compromise is achieved. So compromise is the best answer that can be uh, awarded to this Manipur issue. And the other thing is that development. Development in the sense development, we all know that extremism uh, was yes, in the extremism and development, they are interrelated. Yes, they are interrelated on both ways, on both notes. But development can at times reduce extremism. Not all times, development can also lead to extremism, but development will reduce extremism to a certain extent. So this can happen. So what the government must do, particularly the Manipur government and the government in Delhi, what they must do is that they must focus on uh, industries without, uh, obviously without uh, hampering the forest resources and the rights of forest dwellers and other forest dwellers, tribals and other forest dwellers. So this should not happen. So they must uh, they must correct a particular plan in such a way that in such a way that it imposes or it brings it assures in a lot of industrial development without hampering the ecology of Manipur and this industrial development it can lead to further uh, non-agricultural income of people and their own uh, stand of living and all these things will increase so these are the two best possible solutions not two best but there are other solutions also two most widely discussed solutions that are being uh, in the talks that are on the table when it comes to the Manipur conflict. Thank you.